The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Welcome to the show. Dr. Rudy Cashman here today to speak about a very interesting subject and something we've all been involved with at one time or another, and, and that's about milk and your health. Uh, how does that affect you? Is it good for you? Uh, are there bad parts to it? Uh, it's very interesting. I'm going to be referring a lot out of two, two books. They just confirm knowledge which I already had. But if you wanted to uh, buy them or get them in the library where we're at now, Public Access Library, we are thankful uh, uh, for the show. The first book uh, that I, is going to be called Joe Key on, Joe Key on Whitewash. Whitewash, the disturbing truth about cow's milk and your health. Here's the cover, an uh, excellent, excellent book uh, to read. Uh, I read it a number of years ago. I reread it again uh, here. Uh, and the other book uh, goes much deeper into the history, uh, frankly, thousands of years ago, by Mark Kolansky, Milk, a 10,000-year food fracas, <laughs> and will be uh, discussing that. So two great reference books. I think if you're a teacher in school, for example, I would uh, read this or out of uh, interest, uh, I think you, you'll really uh, love that. And I'll tell you uh, a lot of information out of these uh, books. So let's start on this road together. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, let's talk about for a minute because you hear a lot about uh, you get to drink milk uh, because it's full of calcium. Uh, but isn't it interesting, I call it the calcium paradox, the U.S. is a top consumer of milk, but yet we have the highest number of bone fractures. Does that make any sense? Yes, there's science behind it, and I explain it to you. Uh, the milk industry, through advertisements, for over 80 years, told us the benefits of milk. But I tell you, they were exaggerating, not just a little bit, but a lot. Matter of fact, it's so serious and so incorrect that in Europe, they're not allowed to advertise publicly. Mm -hmm. Not allowed. And I'll show you why in a little bit. And, uh, when you think in this country, uh, they even uh, provide milk through, I think, the CHIP program, uh, some government program, uh, where they encourage the children uh, to drink milk. And in fact, they won't give them extra money to that agency, uh, like a public health agency. Uh, they won't give them extra federal money if they don't advertise milk. What do you think? Do you think lobbying or industry might have something to do with that? You bet that they do. Some of these uh, public uh, organizations that uh, provide health care uh, for not too well-to-do children, for example, one of them told me, one in town, the neighborhood health clinic, that every patient they were looking at is diabetic. 
Can you imagine that? And then the next building uh, has the name of the government agency. I think it's a CHIP program, is it, where they, where they will provide quite a bit of money f for them to consume milk when it's unhealthy the majority of the time. Uh, just think about that a, mi a minute. We have 5,400 mammals, you know, they give milk, okay, mammals. Yet, none, one of those species has the same amount of protein, carbo carbohydrates, and fats in the milk. They're all different. Matter of fact, a veterinarian will tell you, you give the milk of one species to another, that species will die. The recipient will die. Every veterinarian knows that, except we humans, we seem to tolerate it for a period of time because of an enzyme we have, but most of the time at age four, the enzyme's gone and we're still drinking milk, getting the side effects. Uh, the Asians, for example, don't have the enzyme at all, so they don't drink milk at all. Not at all. So you gotta have your milk. Well, whoever said that, <laughs> they're wrong. Uh, okay, and I'll explain that in more detail. So, uh, all this advertising they've done for 80 years that milk is healthy, and, and we see them on the cover of Time magazine, and, and uh, New York Times wrote big stories, and in reality, they may not have known it, but it, scientifically, it was, it was a lie. So, uh, dairy is a staple here, it's readily available. It's the most commonly consumed food, but it's not a staple in China, Japan, Vietnam, Thailand. Mm -hmm. It is in India uh, where you can't even kill a cow. They let them run free in the streets, mm -hmm. based on, on the Hindu religion, I think, in part. So we are the world's biggest consumer of dairy products. Mm -hmm. Other countries are Australia, New Zealand, North America, Western Europe, Europeans, especially where I lived as a child, I lived in Germany, and we consumed a, a lot of milk. And guess what? I had a lot of diarrhea. I had a lot of acne as a child. Never stopped till I stopped consuming milk. Teenage girls wouldn't give me a kiss because I had acne pustules all over my lips and my jaw, and it was even in my eyelid. It was a horrible thing. I, did, I did, just did not know. My parents did not know uh, about the association uh, with milk. Uh, and the countries that consume the most milk have the highest rate of bone fractures. And they take a long time to heal. And, uh, so let me tell you what dairy consumption also is associated with it. Allergies, acne, constipation, colitis, eczema, a rash, scaly rash on the, on the skin can be a trouble. Constant ear infections. Most kids that have constant ear infections, otitis media, are milk drinkers. Where I would go to work out and take yoga lessons, I remember uh, my instructor told me about her children. They were constantly going to the emergency room with ear infections. I told them, are you, giving them a lot of milk? Yes, every day. Uh, I said, stop that, and they did. No more ear infections, that's common. Even type one diabetes, yes, most people say type one diabetes, where you make no insulin, it's an autoimmune disease, totally. No, it is not totally. It can be related to gluten, it can be related to consumption of milk, even consumption of milk while the baby is in the uterus. So when they're born, they're diabetic. Mm -hmm. Not uncom uncommon. Uh, and uh, uh, and that, another one, autism, Crohn's disease, that's in, 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 the, in the bowel, leukemia. Yeah, children who have leukemia ask about, are they consuming a lot of, lot of milk? Uh, and uh, so, but ignorance in healthcare on prevention is, is, is part of the problem. Uh, and uh, uh, nutrition is the biggest failure uh, that we, for our children, for us, 
many kids die of a heart attack at age 30 because uh, they were diabetic. They, they uh, drank a lot of milk or ate a lot of sugary products. Uh, and uh, so it's America's health pa paradox. Um, the, uh, part of the reason is we don't have a uh, total health care system where we would have good statistics uh, on what our people have. It's all broken up. We, we, we don't know what the veterans have or the children have. I mean, we have some knowledge, but it's not well coordinated. Uh, that's part of the problem. Uh, and, and we have a high rate of osteoporosis, which uh, is preventable. Exercise, proper eating, it's, it's not that hard. It's not drinking milk. Drinking milk is not the way to treat osteoporosis. It helps form osteoporosis, okay? And, uh, but, you know, it's our, it's our love of milk. Uh, actually, they found that in milk, the queso, quesomorphones, that's morphine, a little bit of morphine is in milk. That makes us feel good as part of the reason we drink it. That's why a baby falls asleep and, and has a smile on her face uh, when they're consuming milk from the mother. It's not just love, it's also the morphine, morphones in milk, a very low amount. Not addictive, but it's, it's there. Uh, so, uh, I mean, doesn't it seem ridiculous that we have to get underneath a cow three times a day <laughs> to get some milk to eat? So, uh, mother's milk actually is our best milk because it's made of good fats, omega-3 fats. There is what the baby needs for best growth of the body, for the best growth of their brain. So children that breastfeed, uh, and actually you can breastfeed almost two years, yeah, hardly anybody does it, but even three or six months would, uh, would be uh, helpful. Uh, they are the ones uh, that develop the best, uh, have the least uh, 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 problems. Also C-section has something to do with it. If, if a baby is born, uh, without going through the birth canal, they don't pick up the bacteria that are normally present uh, in the uh, uh, vagina, which would paint uh, the uh, uh, baby's face, and they would, uh, ones that determine what type of bacteria we have in our gut. So uh, they don't properly digest uh, food or, or uh, infant food, for example, or, or milk, because they don't have the enzymes that are necessary. So, uh, uh, so uh, C-section uh, may be easier on the mother, uh, but it can make life more difficult for a child, because there are different bacteria in the gut to digest uh, food. Uh, mothers, on the average, the ones that do uh, uh, breastfeed, which not everyone, not everyone, and, uh, but they had the best brain uh, for mother's milk. Uh, in Cuba, a country, you know, next door, a communist country, uh, partly because of cost or whatever reason, but mothers breastfeed ch children for two years. They all do. They just demand it. They don't provide. Uh, uh, milk substitutes, uh, uh, and uh, even some companies, you know, you know, now make what appears to be milk. Nestle's does that; it sells it all over the world, uh, uh, and to get them hooked on uh, uh, the sugar of milk, uh, and and they will then buy sugary drinks. Uh, that's done done on purpose, mm -hmm. but that has been. I discuss now, and the information is passed around. So it's tainted advice, okay? Uh, every five years, the USDA uh, and the, and the uh, Hospital Association gives advice, dietary guidelines f for America. But the trouble is they give false advice. Their food pyramids um, uh, has uh, 
milk and high sugary foods at the bottom that you eat, eat the most, when in reality, good fats should be at the bottom and sugar should be at the top. Uh, so the food pyramid that they construct is incorrect. If you read Susan Ryan's book, Simply Keto, she has a pyramid in there which is good, good fats, guacamole, uh, 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 for example, uh, some, some nuts, some olives. Uh, uh, yes, even a pork chop because it has, it has in it omega-3 fats and, and, and protein, that excessive. Protein should only be 20%, good fats should be 50%, 70%, and on top are the, fr are the fruits and berries. Yes, that's only 10, 15%. That is a healthy food pyramid, but that, that's not what we have in this uh, country. And uh, so, uh, so as doctors, we're guilty, teaching the wrong thing. Most of them don't know what the correct information is, okay? But this is a judgment-free zone, okay? So being overweight, 99% uh, of those people are diabetic, even if their tests uh, show that they have normal blood sugar. You gotta run a glucose tolerance test or insulin tolerance test. You can see that off my other TV shows. Uh, and uh, uh, we, uh, we give the food industry, the cow industry, a 2.5 billion subsidy tax break. The government's doing that. The government's doing that to make you sick. It's true. Two and a half billion bucks. Okay? So, but America is weaning a little bit. We are drinking less milk. Uh, since about 1960, uh, 1966, average American drank 35.5 gallons of milk. Okay? Uh, 1977, 26 gallons. So it is, it is decreasing. And the reason is the information is coming out. And, and part of the reason is w the information is getting around uh, that uh, when the cow, which is placed in a cage, so it won't waste any energy moving around, uh, and they use over it pesticides, herbicides, and they g give it uh, recumbent uh, bovine growth hormone, okay, uh, that uh, increases production of milk per cow 10 times. Mm -hmm. And you know who manufactures it? Eli Lilly. If they had any conscience at all, they, they didn't want their name attached to it, okay? Uh, uh, because uh, when they put that in the cow to make it grow and produce more milk, uh, when you're drinking the milk, you're still getting the hormone. Mm -hmm. So uh, children, uh, since you give it to them uh, at birth, uh, will uh, increase in size get fatter, which produces more estrogen because estrogen is related to the amount of fat which you have, which is affects on your body, increases cancer rates, increases your, your uh, 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 size. Uh, so, uh, and uh, 1977, we think 26 gallons. And uh, so this growth hormone is made by Eli Lilly, who already make insulin which, which all it does is push the sugar into your cells, take, take our cells, insulin, puts the sugar in the cells, but it's still there. So the people who take insulin for their diabetes, for example, you notice they're bigger and bigger and bigger. Insulin does it, makes your, makes your arteries stiff, increased rates of cancer, uh, partly because it, it, it causes the, the recumbent bovine hormone, but also increases the insulin growth factor, which is associated with it, increased rates of uh, cancer, for example. Breast cancer, for example, rates uh, go up. If you were milk drug, all cancers actually go up in incidence, especially in children and adults, adults too, uh, uh, because of increase in this recumbent bovine growth factor and the insulin growth factor, these two, make cells grow, uh, and, and, and cancer is a sugar feeder. 
Otto Warburg in 1930s now, described that called the Warburg effect, uh, that it takes 13 molecules of sugar uh, to make one, one ATP, when normally it's one on one. So uh, cancer cells love sugar. They love sugar. You want the cancer cells to grow, eat a lot of sugary foods. Mm -hmm. And milk is on the list too because it has in it uh, galactose. Uh, and, and a lot of people uh, have, uh, uh, we, the milk is in the sugar, lactose, okay? So, but it needs an enzyme to break it down, okay? Lactase. But a lot of people don't have lactase. Asians don't have lac lactase. Blacks, only 25%, 75% uh, don't have it. Uh, uh, whites uh, whites uh, have, have even le less than that. Asians have no lactase at all, so they don't drink milk uh, at all. Uh, so at age four, nature, God, whatever has designed, evolution has designed our body, that the enzyme lactase that metabolizes lacto goes down, that we don't have it. So that's the reason our bowels react. And, and, uh, and uh, so it's, it's very important uh, that we pay attention and, and know the science, okay? Uh, in 1970, Nestle Company invented an infant formula, uh, artificial milk, uh, although, uh, and, and, and they sold it a lot to poor countries uh, more than here, and, and, uh, uh, and, and that uh, really uh, was a, a, a substitute and, and they start having diabetes as children. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, and then the uh, milk industry started an advertising campaign, which was uh, totally phony, uh, in which it was manufactured. Uh, they made us believe that milk caused, uh, uh, that milk helped cancer, which was wrong. Uh, and uh, yeah. In essence, they were saying it's a pediatric problem with aging consequences is what the head of NIH said at that time. The New York Times ran all kind of uh, pages and advertisements uh, saying how good milk was, and they were wrong, uh, and, and they were wrong. So uh, why are humans the only species that drinks milk of another species? That's the problem. Like I said, if you give uh, milk of one to the other species, a mammal, of course, uh, they would die. Mm -hmm. They would die. Us humans can get away with a period of time, but we, we lose the uh, lactase enzyme too. So we have problems with it. And, uh, Robert, Dr. Rob Krajian reviewed 500 articles, medical articles. None, none said milk is an excellent food. 500. Mm -hmm. So I want you to know it comes from science. Okay. Uh, and in children, what can milk do? Okay. Cause irritation, bleeding, anemia, allergies, infections, salmonella infections. Mm -hmm. Occurring children uh, don't occur from mother's milk, but if they drink it, uh, uh, then uh, for another species, uh, for example, adults, uh, if they react to milk, they may not have the enzyme, they tend to get heart disease, arthritis, sinusitis, leukemia, lymphoma, and increased rates of cancer. Jane Brody even wrote a, a book how great milk was. Well, 10 years later, she took it back and wrote another book and said she had been wrong. She had been wrong. She worked for the New York Times. And uh, 
uh, a journal of pediatrics publicized finally uh, and reviewed the literature on milk and, and, and decided that it was actually not healthy. The pediatricians were starting to wake up, but I know plenty of pediatricians who want to make sure that your child is drinking milk. They better start some reading, read these two books with great references, and they won't be saying that anymore. If you, your doctor says that, give them these books. You read these books yourself and make up your own mind, okay? Uh, uh, Frank, Dr. Frank Oskis, O-S-K-I-S, finally says this whole issue is utterly <laughs> ridiculous, <laughs> okay? Perhaps only when the public becomes educated, only the calves will be left to drink cow's milk. <laughs> I think I'm helping that. I think I'm pointing out it is utterly ridiculous. So we have 5,400 species of mammals. Each has different milk. Each species has different, different protein, different carbohydrates, different fats, so you can see uh, how they can react to each other. So each one has different needs. Each species uh, has different fats, protein, carbs, and also minerals. Sodium and potassium is different in, in these species. Uh, a baby rat, for example, has high protein, 49% protein uh, in the milk. It doubles its weight in four days. <laughs> yeah. A rat will double its weight in four days. Uh, uh, and and a, a human uh, in about 180 days, okay. Uh, a cow will double its weight in 47 days. Humans, 180. But let me go through this so you understand it. That, uh, in 100 grams uh, of milk, cows will have 4 grams of protein, okay? A human, 1.1, has a lot less. That's why they grow slower. Uh, let's look at uh, carbohydrates. Humans, pretty high. Cows, 4.9. But sodium content, a cow, 50 uh, milligrams per 100 grams, humans 16. You can see the electrolyte difference, which is going to affect the person consuming the product. Phosphorus, for a cow 97, we're 18. Uh, calcium, 118 in cow's milk, humans 33, but we don't tolerate the cow's milk, so we don't really absorb the calcium. Best source of calcium is broccoli. Uh, things like that. It's not cow's milk, contrary to what you're taught. And uh, so plenty of other foods uh, can provide our calcium needs, broccoli, kale, uh, much more calcium in them uh, than in milk. Uh, and remember what I mentioned about the recumbent bovine growth hormone, uh, which uh, we uh, inject uh, cows with so they increase their milk production uh, and that their udders grow in size. And uh, so uh, injecting a cow uh, to increase the yield of milk times 10. Yeah, that's Eli Lilly that's, that's uh, uh, doing it. I noticed lately the, the, the industry is talking about a drug for Alzheimer's disease, memory loss, the biggest cause of memory loss, is diabetes, 80% of it. But again, Eli Lilly is at work, and they produce this drug, and 14 out of 15 advisors uh, for the FDA said it's of no value. Just one person said it might be of value. And now uh, they uh, are selling uh, uh, two people who have severe memory loss uh, uh, problems, instead of teaching prevention, prevent diabetes, which you can do, they're selling this drug which costs 50,000 bucks a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, same company at work, same company at work, and the other drug companies are the same thing, but here, here, the, here we're talking about 
about insulin, we're coming growth hormones, and we're talking about the new Alzheimer's drug. I'm concerned here. I am concerned here. And, uh, and double check everything that I'm saying in books, which I provide, medical literature, Google it. Um, uh, so uh, protein and magnesium are also related to uh, uh, brain health. And uh, cow's milk causes other diseases too. And uh, if cow's milk is not the best way to get calcium into us, uh, let's, let's look at other human diseases that it causes. Acne, I spoke about, I had it myself all over my face and part of my body. 40 million Americans have acne. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and it caused a lot of fear, shame, anxiety. I had it. Every day I was dealing with it. And, uh, and, and, and my parents who had a deli in New York had all this milk on the table every day and day. Rudy got to drink your milk when in reality. And they knew it too. It was already known, but they didn't know it. But industry uh, knew it. And uh, we spend $2 billion a year on dermatologists that want to treat the skin diseases. I remember sending my two daughters uh, to a, a wellness person who knew about milk, but didn't tell them. She was selling them expensive medications, and I paid the bill. That lady knew about the milk, didn't tell them not to drink milk. I had to finally find that out for myself. And when I told my daughters about it, their faces cleared right up. It cured the problem, and I didn't have to buy those expensive uh, drugs, which also had side effects, and cost me a lot of money. That was one of the side effects. Okay. Uh, the, uh, in, in 1965, scientific papers started to show uh, about the effects of milk, and uh, uh, they found out that milk milking cows release the most hormones, uh, uh, and they did because they injected, as soon as the uh, baby cow was born, they injected it with hormones so that uh, they would increase the, the production uh, also. So, uh, and uh, the average person was drinking four quarts of milk. I think I probably was. and. Uh, uh, in the United States, artificially inseminating dairy cows after birth, right away, they gave them a shot after birth to keep milk production up. So in, they injected growth hormones, okay? Cows are milked during the highest hormone in their milk. That's when they're producing milk, when they have the highest hormones in their milk. So we're, and we're giving, we're, and we're drinking it, the infant's drinking it. Mm -hmm. having all these tremendous effects uh, on the child, which is not necessary. We don't need milk. Remember, Asians don't even drink milk, okay? Uh, so uh, when we uh, drink milk, the little hormones in them, progesterone is broken down to androgen. Androgen produces uh, sebum. It's a wax-like product secreted by the sebaceous glands on the face as it plugs up the gland. And that's the reason uh, they become uh, infected. Uh, insulin, like growth factor, remember we spoke about that IGF-1, which is in, 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 in cow's milk, uh, and also increases uh, the uh, rate of cancer uh, and uh, acne and other si allergies, side effects. and. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about addiction. Now remember what I said in milk? There's some case of morphine, morphone, which makes you feel good when you drink it, and babies uh, love to consume milk from mother's breast, and they fall asleep because it, it may be love in part, but it is due to the hormones secreted. <laughs> okay, but you can. Uh, Cheese products can be addictive because they have this casomorphin in them. Uh, hard cheeses seem uh, to be better because they don't have a lot of sugar in them, and you can 
consume them. They don't have galactose in them, for example. The sugar uh, from uh, uh, lactose. Uh, the, uh, so we, we have to be concerned, too, about food allergies. You can be allergic to meat. It's the second most common next to wheat. The gluten in wheat is the most allergenic of all. Mm -hmm. And uh, so common symptoms of allergy to milk are fatigue, excessive sweating, sleep disturbance, anxiety, irritability, coughing, chronic coughing, dry mouth, diarrhea, uh, cramps, myalgia. So a lot of symptoms, you have symptoms like that and can be explained. At least put milk on the list. It may not be the milk, but it's, it's on the list. Uh, so uh, what causes the cow's allergy because it's high in casein, the protein, that can cause allergy and reacts with the immune system. The immune system trying to get rid of it and you have allergic reactions. And occasionally a person may have no trouble at all with this and suddenly they have an anaphylactic reaction, a major reaction that blood pressure drops. They start having a seizure, fall on the floor and they die. Anaphylactic reaction. Mm -hmm. Can't occur to anybody who's had no problems at all. Something to keep in mind. That's, that's rare, but it can occur. And, uh, 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 and, and we can have lactose lactase imbalance um, because we can't break down the uh, sugar. Uh, so cow's milk uh, has about 30% uh, uh, lactose. Uh, the, the sugar, okay, uh, the amount of casein is even bigger yet, and, uh, uh, but like I said, it, they can react in seconds, so it can be uh, uh, dangerous. Uh, other things that can occur, and I saw some of the other day, a person of perfectly normal weight but drinks a lot of milk, had a lot of joint pains. It can cause arthritic and joint pains. Milk can do that, yeah. Uh, let's talk about lactose intolerance a little bit. And uh, no lactase can't break down the lactose, the, the sugar. And uh, normally, uh, lactose is digested in the jejunum, part of the upper GI uh, tract. And it breaks it into glucose and galactose. Galactose, galactose is is sugar. We all know glucose is a sugar. And uh, uh, so if you don't have uh, lactose to break down, to break uh, lactase, to break down the lactose, remember sugars have OSE at the end, uh, it, the sugar then goes to the colon, okay? But it has, the colon has a lot of bacteria in it. It, it uh, attack the lactose for food, causing a lot of gas and lactic acid. And, uh, and the problem with that is, too, is then you may have diarrhea and you don't absorb the nutrients in food. So uh, the necessary nutrients uh, that, that, that you need and vitamins, uh, you don't absorb them, so it certainly can make you sick. Uh, so about 50 million U.S. Americans have no lactase. Okay, the, it was discovered in 1901. They've known about it for a long time. Uh, so, remember, you talk about the lactase in Vietnam. 100% 100, 100 of the people don't have lactase. Uh, uh, in Greece, 85%. Japan, 85%. Arab countries, 78%. Uh, North, um, North Europe, Northern Europe. 7% miss it. Remember, I lived in, in Northern Europe. Uh, we drank a lot of milk, I'll tell you. And, 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 and the cancer rates, I think, were, were up there. And uh, in North America, uh, about 50% are missing the uh, enzyme. What's interesting, too, the uh, galactose, the sugar, remember? Uh, the lactose is broken down uh, into galactose and glucose. Uh, can affect the eyes. It can cause cataracts. Uh, 
uh, it can't break down the galactose and, and it, it invades the eyes, which makes me kind of wonder, because I have dry eye quite a bit and I thought of us from getting a, a day older. But I, I have noticed, and I think maybe it's true, that, that 137 pounds, Will I have an ice cream now and then? Yeah, occasionally. occasionally. But I notice I have trouble with my eyes the next morning. That may be the mechanism uh, that because that's made from milk, the ice cream, and uh, and I'm not breaking down the sugar, and it's and occasionally be severe. After reading this, I think I, I got the answer. Uh, goodbye, ice cream. I'll use other ways to feel good. Tap dancing. Pickleball playing. <laughs> okay, so uh, dry eye is interesting. A lot of, a lot of people uh, have that. Uh, and a Dr. Sippy, S I P P Y, uh, had recommended that we drink milk every hour for a peptic ulcer. It's very acidic uh, gut that does that. And he found out. Actually, it didn't work, and they increased the heart disease rate six times. Isn't that interesting? Uh, there is saturated fat in milk, and now in the literature there's a lot of discussion of saturated fat and trans fat. Trans fat is where you add a hydrogen uh, atom and you make margarine, for example. They used to really recommend it. Well, find out it's very unhealthy. So. You don't want to use any food that is hydrogenated fats, but saturated fats, uh, you know, they bad mouth the daylights out of them, but, but some of them are maybe not as bad as, as, as we think. Uh, but uh, could, like what other causal factors could be the heart disease and milk relationship? It could be calcium in milk. There's some calcium in milk, uh, and if we drink a lot of it, uh, in that the calcium would be uh, deposited inside of an inflamed heart, and the calcium counts go up, could it be milk-related? I wonder if it's, you know what I mean? So if your calcium count is up, which some they check as they do physicals and lab tests on you, um, think, are you a milk drinker? And, uh, uh, and in the Lancet Journal, uh, they predicted that, they traced that if, if you took in milk uh, more than u usual, it was directly related to strokes, heart attacks, over a period of four to seven years. Big study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also remember, low-fat milk, you think it's low-fat. It's still 38% fat. So you drink an awful lot of milk, uh, you're going to gain weight because you're consuming a lot of fat. But it's not a good fat. What you want is good fats. Uh, milk is not a good source of it. And uh, the uh, American cheese is 74% fat. Butter is 100%. But actually, these are considered good fats. Hard cheese, butter, considered good fats. Cottage cheese, 38%. Uh, cream cheese, 97%. Ice cream, 48%. So you remember I said eating fat within reason, and, and you don't really have to be concerned too much about that because Fat in food, good fats will turn your appetite off uh, because hormones are released that they go to the pituitary and turn your appetite off. So to overconsume good fats is not likely to happen. Just in case you want to splurge now and then, uh, a Hagen dazs may be 1,200 calories, sorbet 120, <laughs> okay, Ben and Jerry's. 1,020 calories, uh, so you, you got to read your got to read your <laughs> your labels. Okay, let's talk about being overweight and, and 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 obese. Remember, this is a judgment 
free zone, okay? I'm just trying to get you well. Uh, I used to weigh a lot more, maybe 20 pounds more compared to years ago. And uh, the National Center for Health Statistics uh, found that 58% or so of people in the United States are overweight. It's probably higher than that now, probably like 65. 72 million are obese, but it's probably higher now. Uh, and about 3 million, maybe a little like five, are morbidly obese. 300, 400, 500 pounds. I've seen some of these patients and I fear for them. I don't blame them. They're eating this stuff because it makes them feel good. Sugar is addictive. That's the point I'm, I'm trying to make here. You gotta find something else to feed your addiction. But you can detox uh, off of sugary foods a couple of weeks, especially if you eat good fats because uh, they will satisfy, they will affect your appetite center uh, and turn your appetite off. Uh, I tell you a good way to do it too is uh, to use what's called fasting. Uh, by that I mean not eating, and I like fasting 16-8. You don't eat for 16 hours and eat for eight. And what happens is the blood sugar drops, the insulin drops because you're not eating any sugary product. Fat cells open up, uh, go to the liver, turn into ketones, you're now living off of ketones, which are more energetic. The liver, the brain, the kidneys, the pancreas, they love ketones. Now, and, it, and, and, and even a more easy way, eat two meals a day. You get eight hours to eat, two meals. Eat a big, a big uh, breakfast of protein and good fats, okay? Guacamole, for, for um, example and good fats and the other meal, you probably could eat what, anything you want to, any amount you want to, and you'll be very healthy. I've discovered that. Yeah, you almost don't need to select your food if you're fasting. Heck, it was in the Bible, they've done it for thousands of years. Uh, I think I've been eating two meals a day, didn't do it on purpose, uh, and maybe that's why I seem to be very stable, uh, 137 pounds. If I eat too much one night, I think my basic metabolic rate goes up, and by next morning I weigh myself 137 again. It's just in this tiny range. Uh, uh, interesting. It, it, it is it is interesting. So, uh, uh, bariatric surgery uh, does uh, eliminate for a period of time diabetes, but many people start gaining their weight back four, five, six years from now because the stomach, their stomach shrunk, starts getting bigger uh, again. Uh, but uh, it, it can be helpful. And some people, nothing else will work. Some absolutely need it, so I back it in specific papers. But I would try uh, the uh, two meals a day, fasting, eating different food. You'll be healthy and nothing flat. Uh, uh, I think it's just a great way uh, to do it. Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis with bloody diarrhea, occurs in the 15 to 24 year age. Milk a lot of times is a cause. Uh, uh, and uh, some think it's, think it's th that uh, MAP bacteria in the milk that are doing this. Okay, so it needs to be cultured. We have increased rates of cancer related to milk uh, consumption, breast cancer, especially because of the recumbent bovine growth factor and the insulin growth factor. And cancer uh, is a sugar feeder, the Warburg effect. Turns out even the viruses, the 19 that's infecting us, he also is a sugar feeder. Uh, a virus is not a living thing. It enters your cells, steals sugar and fatty acids, and starts multiplying and, and, uh, and growing. Uh, so, uh, and that's the Warburg effect at work again. Uh, and cancer rates, remember we spoke about uh, increase uh, rates associated uh, with uh, milk, lactose, 
increases sugar, growth hormones, are big, and, and the protein growth factor. Uh, Dr. Campbell from Syracuse, a very famous, uh, he went to China and studied and he found increased uh, breast cancer in more protein consumption uh, uh, and uh, found it related uh, to milk and increased fat and estrogen. That's in fat, okay? So it's hormone, breast cancer can be hormone dependent. Not all of it, but a lot of it. Some people think it's just genetic. No, the local, one of the biggest organizations here takes all the money they collect. They send it to Indianapolis because they think it's a genetic disease. 30 genes determine breast cancer. 97% is what you eat and what you're drinking. Mm -hmm. I went and talked to them too to see if they would change and keep some of the money here to educate you, me, in that instant. Uh, but I s thought you should know, okay? So uh, milk has a variety of hormones and 50, 60 hormones on milk, uh, partly uh, because they come from the cow and, the, uh, uh, and also because, you know, what they injected in the cow to make it, it utter, grow and to increase in size to produce more milk. These are all hormones. But when you're drinking the milk, you're drinking the hormones, okay? And uh, in 1998, Professor Jane Plant, <laughs> Plant from Britain, uh, got an award for in science uh, because she had breast cancer, metastatic breast cancer, but just one case of study, and, and she stopped drinking milk. She was drinking a lot of milk and found out her metastatic her cancer spread all went away. Does that prove it, one case? No, but it sure makes you wonder because she was not in the RBGH, in the uh, IGFI, that was gone because she wasn't consuming them anymore. So uh, one case, it doesn't prove the world, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a beginning, okay? So IGF-1 is an insulin growth factor required for tumor formation and acceleration, ma malignant cell growth, and the ability of cancer cells to spread to other organs, IGF-1, so that's related uh, to sugar consumption, galactose consumption, and maybe consuming a lot of sugary uh, uh, products, and that makes cancer cells grow. The Warburg effect, 13 molecules of sugar substances uh, make cells grow faster. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, uh, reducing the sh sugar decreased rates of diabetes, decreased rates of uh, 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 cancer. Uh, so IGF-1 and RBGH are the uh, increased breast cancer rates. And they're brought on by uh, milk and sugary uh, products. The, uh, some dairy farmers did stop using RBGH because it's outlawed in other countries, okay? I remember Elanco, E-L-A-N-C-O, is a division of Eli Lilly. I don't think they were proud that they'd be known for manufacturing it. Uh, and that's the name of the company, a name they used. Uh, and it's sold as, uh, that's the name of the company. Then it's sold as Posilac, P-O-S-I-L-C-A, uh, is the name of the uh, drug. They, they supply 18,000 dairies uh, with Posilac. Uh, uh, and it is banned in 25 countries, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, entire European country. Our public health funding woke up in 2009 uh, and announced that they opposed uh, RBGH to grow for my two. Uh, but, you know, it took a while. And, 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 uh, and I don't know the degree of the enforcement of this uh, band. Ovarian cancer, cancer of the ovaries is also, it's the fifth most common cancer, uh, but uh, they have found there's an increased rate of ovarian cancer. People drink more milk. Like in Harvard, two glasses of milk, a 44% increase in ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. A 66% increased risk uh, by another study, uh, and they call it a serous 
human cancer, which is the kind that is seen in the U.S. And uh, the Iowa Women's Health Study, 29,000 people, postmenopausal, most lactate overconsumption increased 60%. Increased risk, Swedish study, 60,000 females were studied, good on age 13, one glass of milk, uh, increased cancer risk uh, at a pretty good uh, uh, pace. It's seen with multiple sclerosis, more common in milk consumers. So it's an autoimmune response to recumbent bovine growth hormone uh, is what they think uh, MS could be partially related to. Interesting, because I used to treat a lot of those uh, patients. Parkinson's disease, who consume the most lactose, having uh, uh, calcium, vitamin D, and dairy protein, uh, the incident uh, two glasses a day, the incident of Parkinson's disease doubles. Isn't that interesting? And uh, uh, also, there's some rates of tuberculosis associated because it can be transmitted from cows to humans. And in Michigan, uh, there were 10 cattle ranches where there was a big problem. Uh, also, milk can be contaminated by many other products. To keep in mind, uh, pesticides, herbicides, it, it, the list is unending. It's on page 89 uh, of this whitewash book uh, because there's, there's uh, so many of them. So also in milk, they, came, they found a rocket fuel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> percolate. It propels missiles. Uh, and... Uh, Somewhat better milk uh, would be hemp milk, uh, almond milk, but again, depends on how much you consume because uh, it may have more fat in it uh, uh, that you like. So in summary, uh, what I'm saying, I just want you to gather information and maybe read this white bark, whitewash book and read this other book to gain more uh, information, but not just to give you a newborn milk with a less uh, you have a lot more knowledge, and you, you, it is your decision. But, but and talk to your pediatrician. Uh, if he recommends you get a drink a lot of milk for this child, well, uh, show him these two books, or at least have him look at my TV show. This one will be on YouTube probably within two weeks. Rudy, Rudy Cashman, milk. It'll you know it'll it'll come up. So uh, I enjoyed talking to you about. The, this subject because it's so common. I uh, Believe me, I consumed a lot of milk as a child and gave me a lot of trouble. Uh, and, uh, but fortunately, I started reading, I think. I moved to another to the U.S. Uh, well, actually, let's face it, uh, my mother in this country gave me a table full of milk when I brought over the high school students in New York City. <laughs> so. It probably took maybe even a trip to college before I wised up a little bit and a lot more the last uh, 20 years or so. And, and after all, you know, I'm 39 for the 46th time, weigh 138 pounds, and the things I teach you, I follow. I'm on zero pills. So uh, you might pay some attention to that and watch some of my other shows. Why am I doing this? Why am I so passionate? Because I love you. I care about you. I always will accept additional information. Look me up. Give me a hug. Attend one of my talks. Look at my uh, YouTube. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks very much.